pulled out your Peterman very fast. Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Oh, hang on. Let me look that up. Hang on. Hang on. Nathan Peterman. Let's see. Nathan Peterman right now. Is he a free agent? Oh, he is. Shoot. That's too bad. I was hoping he's on a roster so that I could make sure his coach knew that I'm coming down his road and that he's not getting a free pass from me if he's got to pull out his Peterman at any point this season. Okay? Is your last name Shanahan? <laughs> Honestly, okay, the, you're, you on. are a Shanapologist. Hold so on. You are a Shanahan apologist a, is what you are. Not even a little bit. You're giving and I him know, a I know, preemptive pass. And you're, and you're giving him a preemptive strike. I'm holding his feet to the fire. That's right. You're keeping it real, yeah, Dad. You, you took the words right out of my mouth. All I'm doing I'm is... keeping it a buck. Can you all admit, and I know the answer is no... Can you all admit? Well, then why do I even listen? You're yeah. holding Shanahan to a uh, to a bar that you're not holding any other coach in the NFL to. Not one. There's not one coach who you would say we expect your team to not drop one iota if the backup quarterback has to play long term. It's for a number of reasons. Explain. Reason number one: this roster is legit, top to bottom. Forget the quarterback. You have the best or the second best roster in the National Football League. Can I respond to each individually? You can, If Mark. you want to use the phrase, forget the quarterback, what the hell have we been doing for the last six months? How about, who cares who the quarterback we is? We were talking about the backup quarterback because they spent three first-round picks right. to move up and get him, and then they traded him for a fourth. Right. But, That's why we, we but, talked about but it. But to your the, the point you just made... Who cares who's the quarterback? I've said that it's, for years. I mean, have you been on the show with me for two I, years? I have. I've disagreed with it the whole time. Right. Why yeah. don't we just get Nick Mullins back? Because that works. Nick Mullins is not very good. Well, wait, but, but it doesn't matter. You need a quarterback who's at least mediocre. Uh, and they have a couple I was gonna of them say, now. I would imagine a lot of our listeners just said, Sam Darnold's not very good either. He's at the very least mediocre. He's If you want to rank all the quarterbacks on planet Earth right now, He's a top 40 quarterback for sure. He might be top 30. I agree with that. And you have him. And, you know, Brock Purdy's probably higher on the list than, than Sam is. You've got two of them. So could I respond, since when has top 30 in quarterbacking been good enough? Since, well, it's since been when good enough a few times. When? when? Joe Flacco, Brad Johnson, right. Trent Dilfer. With the most elite defenses and one-timers. One-timers. Right. Those were one-offs. Sure. Right? And I mean, are not you not like consistent contenders? Are you looking at Brock Purdy to win multiple Super Bowls? Do you know how many quarterbacks have won I, I, more than one I, Super Bowl? I would love that. I'm not. I'm not predicting that. I think there's there have only been about seven quarterbacks to win multiples. I'm, seven or eight. I'm not going to hold ever. his feet to the fire if he doesn't. I'm holding his feet to the fire. Are you? Because your roster is unbelievable, top to bottom. Your roster is legit. Okay, so, so that's reason one. Yes. All right. Reason two, you've got a backup who is very experienced, and he is a quarterback who you think, Kyle Shanahan, and you've been praising the arm talent and his wherewithal and how much you wanted him coming out of college. All the sound bites we've played right, for but, weeks. But, but Kyle Shanahan is covetous of this man. Uh, I think you're overstating it based on... He's into him. He's I think, digging it <laughs> and stuff. I think that we have to be careful that when we hear complimentary sound bites, we automatically go, that's what Kyle thinks, because I have a truck full of Kyle Shanahan compliments of Trey Lance, but he gave him to the Cowboys for a fourth-round pick. Well, he failed Trey Lance. That's fine. And you have that sound on your board, I'm I sure. do, and I don't believe that either. So... Oh, I do believe that. Well, that's fine. You can have any opinion you want. My point is, is coaches say nice things about their players. So that does not right. mean that Kyle Shanahan thinks Sam Darnold is him. He thinks he's a really good QB, too. He's more him than Trey Lance. We know that. Correct. And according to Kyle Shanahan, he thinks that he is better than Trey Lance is right now for this team going into this season. So because of that... I hold his feet to the fire. Okay. If nothing else bad happens in terms of injury and you have to go to QB2, I expect you to still be a good team, a winning team, 
and go out there and do as well as you think that you would have done otherwise, which to me... But I agree with all those things. Make and it that's to the not, last weekend before the Super Bowl. That, okay, see, that's Make not, it to the conference to, championship to, game. To still be good, to still be viable. No, no, no. To conference still championship. Okay, that's different. If you lose different. that game, and I've said that all along because I'm with you in terms of Super Bowl or bust, that is an unfair bar for any team. Only 35 coaches have ever won the Super Bowl, and he's not one of them. And there are, I think, eight in the league right now who have won one, and only one is going to win one this year. So to think about that as the bar for anybody is unfair. But for this team, you should be one of the last four teams standing. And if you're not, and the only injury you had was quarterback, and you went to Sam Darnold and he didn't get it done, that's on you, Kyle. I'm holding your feet to the fire. Oh, man, that's right. You better wear an extra pair of socks, dog. He's coming for you coming for you. But, I'm not but alone. Wait a while cuz you know his legs hurt a little bit. So it might take a minute to get there. My legs? <laughs> yeah, I'm that was mean spirited. No, it wasn't it? No. You're you're not quick at this uh, stage of your life. Are I'm you? explosive when it comes to holding feet to the fire. Okay. Okay. Although I will say this, a little, just like, uh, little slow today trying to keep the baby away cuz she's learned how to go up a step. Oh crap. But going down the step She's not as adept. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't have gates up yet? We, we don't have gates Where's yet. Where's your Antonio Gates? We have a landing. Thank you. Uh, we have a landing. She goes up the landing, and I was trying to get her to help her go down the landing, but she burst away from me explosively, head first, boom, and it was a classic like... <laughs> boom goes to dynamite. Dude, boom, and then... Okay. She's going to scream, but it's like the five-second delay. Oh, where yeah, 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 yeah. That's the worst. It's all face. Just, no, because like, they, they're so upset they oh can't make God. noise. Yeah. It's just the... And hopefully <laughs> Supper's not listening right now because... Uh, it's just a show, Supper. It's not real. Yeah, it's make-believe unless you see that she does have a little bit of a bump over her left eye. That one's on Daddy. Don't blame the nanny. Don't blame... Because now it's like, oh, that must have happened on the nanny's watch. You, you get a you know? nickname her left eye? Dude... Yeah, <laughs> shout out. Uh, Don't go chasing yeah. waterfalls. Thank you. You're, right. you're on fire. Uh, it, Feet it, it, to the fire, Mark. <laughs> that's right. I'm sick of you being Mark uh, Shanahan. I, I want. Oh, it's okay, Kyle. You know, go ahead. Yeah. You go eight and nine. I, I'm fine with it. That was my Willard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Garden this hour brought to you by Soft Serve Ice Cream. I'm Mark Willard. I think you're. I think you're being uh, offensive to Brock Purdy. I think you're being dismissive to Brock Purdy. I think that you're being too soft on Kyle Shanahan. I'm not being soft on Kyle Shanahan. I'm not being too mean to Brock Purdy. Well, you're no, you're dismissing what he did last year. Thinking, it was nice. You're thinking that Sam Darnold can do the same thing. You're being you're, you're dismissing, in fact, the entire quarterback position on the 49ers when you say that uh, j- just a healthy truck full of all of these players can come in and do this. And actually, I said this earlier, what's really fascinating about this this debate is those of you who think you're keeping it real uh, keeping it and those of you who think you're holding Kyle's feet to the fire Big time. tucked into your point is that you think he's the most amazeballs coach in the history of ever. Which is he's why the, I'm, I'm holding him accountable. Because he's the only one. Who doesn't need a good QB in order to win the whole banana? He has built this team around the fact that he doesn't need a high-priced quarterback to win the whole banana. He said it himself. I want a quarterback on a rookie deal. How many quarterbacks on a rookie deal have won the Super Bowl? Uh, I believe the answer is one. Some. some. Russell Wilson. and Uh, Ben Roethlisberger. And I believe Mahomes won before before he signed an extension. First five years of Mahomes' career, yeah. And what was he making? I mean, he was the what with the eleven, seven, eleven sure. pick in the draft. Okay, yeah. And, and I, so that's and, the blueprint. And I bet that I'm forgetting some, like through the history of the NFL, <clears throat> it can be done. It's very rare at age 23, right? But it's that's very, what he has decided that he wants to do. I, I, so like, that's why I'm holding his feet to the fire. Okay, and and that's fine if, if you want to do that. I do think that you're ignoring some circumstance, which is obvious. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I just try to keep this to, and, and you know, oh, I'm, I'm on Kyle's pay, payroll. No, he, he screwed the pickup sideways, from so many angles. Read Tim Kawakami's recent article in the Athletic. It was and great. You will be blown away at not the fact that the Niners messed up the Trey Lance pick. It feels like they messed it up nine times, over and over and over. Their process was incorrect. 
and 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 had all kinds of of fallacies with the way that they approached the whole thing. But I keep my criticism right there. Right there. They messed up the pick. But to now extend that to now in the seventh round, you guys drafted somebody who ended up being way better than anybody thought he could be. And because he did end up being the best option you have in this moment by far, now we've transferred that to mean, so Kyle, this is who you picked. As opposed to, this opportunistically landed in our lap, and he's clearly the best option we have right now. And so if this approach that you're taking doesn't work, you're dead. No. And it's like... You're not dead. Not necessarily. But it's like, Not necessarily fault. at all. Of course it is. It, of course it is. But think about the two perspectives that you have the opportunity to have right now. It's your fault that the Trey Lance thing didn't work. Correct. Yes. But it is in many ways your credit that you ended up with this other possibility. And I give him that, credit that for that. almost every other team, when they make the big draft bus pick, when they do that, you don't end up with a pivot like this. Right. So that is actually, in my mind, a good thing. It's absolutely a and, good thing, and, and I give him full credit for that. But it does not mean that, therefore, now we transfer first-round expectations onto Brock as if this was the 49ers' plan all along. You're misconstruing. You're either not understanding what I'm saying Maybe or not. you're misconstruing it. Because to me, Let me hear it. the pick has nothing to do with anything anymore. But you're the, the one who has said it better work. Yes, because you've chosen Brock Purdy. You didn't choose Trey Lance. You picked Trey Lance. You decided he's not good enough. You traded Trey Lance. Right. You've chosen Brock Purdy. You've anointed him as QB1. Forget where you picked him. Forget where you picked Trey Lance. See, now, why would you use the word anointed? Because they've given him the job. No, He's just, the right. anointed one. But anointed me, like, see, that's what I'm talking about. You You've guys given are, him the job you're all, as QB1. You're, you're not acting. letting me finish the point. Go ahead. The point is you've chosen him to be QB1, whether he's anointed Thank you. or ensconced. That's a better or, word. It, it doesn't matter. Admit that anointed has... There's there's fluff around that. You're, you're trying to say something there. Well, he's only anointed when he gets a second contract. But between now and the second contract, he is on the road to anointment. How about that? Sure. Because he's not yet anointed. Maybe. You can't anoint him. I mean, him. it's been such a small sample again, size. It, I don't even know why we think he's going to be any good. And you said we wouldn't get bogged down in semantics. No, 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 no. And now we're getting bogged no, down in semantics. No, we're not. Because there's messaging there. There is me When you say, you've, this is what I always hear, you've anointed him. No, he didn't. He said, that's my starter. Correct. That's the best guy I got right now because the guy I wanted to anoint didn't work. And you shipped him out of town. Yeah. So Because he's not good. Whether or not you could actually you know, baptize him with the holy water and anoint him officially or you, know, you can deify him, whatever the terminology is, whatever you want to choose, bottom line is you've given him the job. There you go. And so it had better work. Brock Purdy is QB1 of the 49ers, a team that... Everybody thinks from Vegas to NFL Network and all the way back around, everyone thinks you should be 11 wins minimum. The over-under is 11, 11 and a half, wherever it sits. You should be good. So if Brock Purdy is not good, and if your team is not good, that falls on Kyle Shanahan. Of course it does, like it does any coach when they play. But I, I, I do. Honestly, I appreciate you changing the verbiage there because it is important. It is important. He anointed Brock. If you are speaking like that, in my opinion, that is messaging that you are expressing anger from the Trey Lance situation no anger. and projecting it on Brock. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM in HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. These are two separate things in my mind. You absolutely messed up sideways on Trey Lance, but I'm not going to then take that mistake and project it to the selecting of Brock Purdy as your best choice. Selecting. The anointing. Yeah. They sprinkle them. This is my starting quarterback. Sure. But so many of you want to go, oh, you went into the lab and you decided to make your perfect quarterback. And if there's anybody in the world you could have, it's Brock Purdy. 
So it better work. No, he's not doing that. If the if, if the Chiefs called tomorrow and said, Mahomes for Brock, what do you think, Kyle? That deal's done. The, he's not anointing him. Well, you'd have to package Ayuk and probably Trent Williams, too, because Mahomes makes an S-ton. In- yeah, but I don't think... NFL trades work like that. I know. It's not an NBA trade machine. You don't have to stay under the cap no. mid-season. <laughs> but do you get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? Though? I get what in you're terms saying. Of, but to but, me, the whole pick thing is no longer even a conversation. You screwed up royally with Trey Lance. Sure. You, you wasted too many draft picks on a guy who you never really used, and you got a fourth back. That's done. And this coming draft, when they have that fourth-round pick and they actually use it, we could say, oh, this is the pick they got from Dallas. Isn't that cute? Huh, huh, huh. But where Brock was picked, that doesn't matter either. Yes, they found a quarterback at the end of the draft. Were they lucky? Maybe. Were they smart? Maybe. That's up to you to determine. I think that they were smart. They're both. Exactly. There's, there's some both. There's Whatever plenty of both. Whatever you want to call it, the bottom line is the guy that they took is now their guy. So I take all the picks and I throw it off the table. You've got Brock Purdy as your quarterback. Sure. And he's on a rookie deal, and he's largely unproven. What he has proven is really, really good. Can he do it for a full year in a postseason and win a Super Bowl? Let's find out. Uh, Solomon in New Jersey. Hey, Solomon, what's going on? You're on with Willard and Dibbs. Hey, Willard Dibbs. Good to talk to you. Um, I'm actually in lockstep with Dibbs on the uh, sentiment here. Just going to provide a couple points for you. Maybe you could give me some feedback, Willard. Sure. Um, so, essentially... Just for the, because I think the question is twofold. Uh, the first part being, you're saying that there won't be a precipitous drop off. I think that's what Dibs is saying. He, I well, it's agree. more, it's more, it's more about expect. Yeah. It's not, it's not about what we think is going to happen. Okay. It's about what what should be expected. Right. In other words, this okay. conversation and, and, and depth, like, be, be, it's all cool. I'm gonna, we're gonna go back to you. I want to give everyone who might just be joining us the background of where this came from. The crossover today with Steiny and Goo. The conversation went to the idea of whether or not um, Kyle Shanahan would face criticism if Sam Darnold has to come in and play for an extended period if there's a drop-off, if the 49ers don't play as well. My point is I don't know why there would ever be a football team where there wouldn't be a change in the expectation when you go to QB2. A lot of people say, oh, my gosh, this is – Kyle's hand-selected guy for QB2. Yeah, just QB2. Like, I'll judge Sam as QB2, not 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 QB1. But but that's kind of where this all started, Solomon. So go ahead. Gotcha, yeah. So well, I'll stick to that last point that you just made. He was brung in for QB2. If we actually look at the nuances of Sam Darnold's deal, he has so many incentives that I guess if he plays in the playoffs, if he throws for a certain amount of passing yards, that his contract can actually balloon up to like eleven million or something like that, right? And that's starting quarterback money. So uh, eleven, uh, eleven million. Good. Well, first of all, no, it's not uh, eleven. No, no starting quarterback. Take Brock Purdy out of it. Forget rookie deals. No, no starting quarterback that people care about is making eleven million. Like Jimmy Garoppolo makes twice that in in Vegas. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm just saying other quarterbacks do make. Under that, like Baker's going to make under that this year. Well, right, because he's not very good, and he had to battle to win the job just a week ago. Like Solomon, here, here's how I guess I would respond to to your point. He, Sam's deal actually has some similarities to what Jimmy's deal ended up having last year, which is escalators based on you ending up as the starter yeah. and therefore winning games and playoffs. I'm looking at it right now. Contract, the breakdown contractually that 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 to me it sounds to me like you're insinuating that that contract means that that's what the 49ers think about him. I would respond to that and thank you Solomon. I would respond to that and say no that's what the contract needed to look like in order for the 49ers to get him. Because he is and was a starter. One of the mo- yeah. well in the past, but is and was in that moment of free agency one of the most sought after backups. Sure. And as I said, my my question from the beginning when he was signed was how'd they get him to say yes? Because the Niners had such a messy quarterback situation, and Sam would have had a, a bunch of options. And if somebody has a bunch of options on the table, then you've got to bake in incentives and things like that in order to get him to sign. The 49ers very much because of past injury and the clear internal belief that Trey Lance was not good enough 
felt like backup quarterback was a priority. Yeah. So they painted a deal that allowed them to get the backup they wanted. Six that and does, a half million in incentives. Yeah, and that does that does not change for me that he's still the backup. He is. and is seen as the backup. But he signed eleven is not starting quarterback money, no. and, and he's not going to make that unless he even becomes the starting quarterback. Three hundred grand for every game that he plays a quarter of the snaps. Okay, and they win. So that oh, that okay. right there, that's five point one million. So if he starts all seventeen and he plays all seventeen and they win all seventeen. He gets five point one million. So I mean, that's, that's peanuts. That's that that's number. Peanuts for a QB. He gets a million for playing half the snaps in the regular year, and they make the playoffs. This is interesting. I want to hear them all. What what are, what are the what else? So that's now we're at six point one million. Okay. So the first. What's the base? The base, I believe, is a two million guaranteed plus a two million dollar. There's other bonuses that he could make. Okay. I, I don't know roster or whatever. He gets a hundred grand for every playoff game he plays. Half the snaps for a total of four hundred grand. So that's where your six point five comes in. Okay. So play twenty five percent of the snaps and win three hundred grand, and you get a million if you play half the snaps all year. And then other than that, you get playoff bonuses. So of the six point five million in incentives, he's likely to earn probably if he starts five games and wins all five. That's one point five million. And then he doesn't start in the playoffs. That's all he'd get. Right. So the likelihood, actually, I would say, if you were like placing a Vegas bet on this, on the six point five million, you're making very little of it. Maybe one game. Yeah. He starts more than twenty five percent of the snaps, and they win. So that's three hundred grand. I mean, I ain't mean, starting quarterback money. Are, are, no, are, it's are, not a starting quarterback are deal. Are, 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 are y'all taking from that contract that Kyle Shanahan said that Sam Darnold him? Like he's QB two. No, but that it's to a me, good it's a good QB two deal. And those, it's a really good one. Those incentives were like straight up Geico, as I borrow from Guru. Like, hey, if Brock's not ready, if Brock has a setback, yeah. and you do start, wow, well, then you're going to be able to get you know all these well, things when you start. I also think it's an acknowledgement. Hey, Sam, this is your first backup deal in the NFL. Like, yeah, you you were a starter. You were a third pick overall not that long ago. You're a high level backup. And so you got to protect a guy like that because if he ends up starting, he's going to want, I don't know, like you said, half of a starting salary. I mean, it's not even really that. It's not half of a good one. What did Herbert just get? 52? Jeez. 52 a year. Right. Like, that's a starting quarterback. 